Okay, so pathologies of the upper digestive system. Uh, and we're also going to, in this place, discuss uh, the natural flora that's found in the digestive system. So uh, the digestive system is generally divided into two parts. And actually, I should say, the digestive system in general is divided into two sections. What's called the gastrointestinal tract, uh, or sometimes the alimentary canal, which is the tube leading from your mouth all the way through you, out the other end. Um, and uh, so this is a functional division, right? So like, that's the bit that does the actual digesting. Um, it is where food is absorbed. It's what performs the major functions of the digestive system. We also have what are called the accessory organs, um, and these do things involved with digestion, but may or may not actually be in the alimentary canal or ever come into contact with foodstuffs. Um, this includes organs that make digestive enzymes and components such as the liver, gallbladder, and pancreas, uh, as well as organs associated with, um, uh, like pre-processing food, like the uh, salivary glands uh, and teeth. The gastrointestinal tract itself is divided into an upper and lower region, uh, with the upper region generally consisting of the mouth, and esophagus, uh, and the lower digestive system generally consisting of the stomach, small intestines, large intestines, and rectum. Uh, so here you can see a general map of the digestive system with the alimentary canal, and then the, over through here and then out. Uh, and also the, um, the accessory organs, teeth, tongue, uvula, salivary glands, liver, yada, yada, yada. Oh. Theoretically, any of these parts can get infected, although some of them are much more prone to infection than others. Um, teeth are organs. Um, and they are, in fact, one of the most frequently infected organs in your body. Uh, bacteria like to live on your teeth as well as in between your teeth and down into uh, the coating that coats your teeth called the gums. And different bacteria are going to live in different places. Um, there's a whole huge different variety of bacteria that live in your mouth. Not as many bacteria by number as live in your intestines, but it's, it's a huge diverse ecosystem because of the, like first off, the diversity of foodstuffs that they have available. Um, and also the diversity of different environments that there are to live in. Bacteria that live on top of the, uh, the teeth as well as on the tongue and on the surface of the mouth are going to receive fairly large amounts of oxygen. Uh, bacteria that are buried deep in the gums are going to be largely anaerobic. Um, generally, the, well, the mouth is chock full of microbes, uh, as is the, uh, the pharynx, um, at the back of the throat, the esophagus, stomach, and duodenum, which is the first part of the uh, small intestines, are largely free of microbes for a couple of different reasons. Uh, the esophagus 
is um, has a lot of mucus in it and is regularly abraded by food and drink going down it. So basically any microbes trying to stay in the esophagus are gonna get scraped down into the stomach. Um, the stomach is kept free of microbes for the most part by the fact that it's full of acid. And most microbes don't like to live in acid. It's uh, even more acidic than most acidophilic bacteria like to live in. The duodenum, the first part of the intestines, is where most of the enzymatic digestion occurs. And so it is full of, uh, you know, proteases that rip apart proteins and lipases that rip apart, rip apart lipids and things like that. And, um, well, proteins and lipids and stuff like that are what bacteria are made out of. So most bacteria find that to be an inhospitable environment. On the other hand, your tongue, teeth, and generally your oral cavity is very hospitable to bacteria, and you have a lot of bacteria that live there. Um, most particularly are bacteria of the Streptococcus genus. Um, the uh, most common is uh, what's called Strep viridians. Um, strep mutans is also very common, uh, as are um, certain varieties of yeast, uh, and occasionally some more pathogenic varieties such as uh, strep pneumoniae and strep pyogenes. So these are transient bacteria in most of us. There are a certain number of the population that have native populations of those, um, or native cultures of those uh, uh, somewhat more pathogenic bacteria. On the other side of the barrier, you have very different microbes, like for the most part, the strep and other bacteria that live in the mouth don't survive down into the intestines, whereas the bacteria that live in the intestines are pretty different. Um, rather than being gram-positive coxy, they tend towards being gram-negatives, although there are gram-positives that live down there as well. Uh, in order to live in the lower intestine, you need to have a number of metabolic factors that you guys have probably uh, at least discussed in lab, like the ability to live in bile salts and things like that. Um, microbes that live in the uh, lower small intestine, the, uh, the ileum and jejunum, are um, usually, usually, good for you in the sense that they are microbial antagonists and will prevent other microbes from colonizing your intestines. Um, they are generally prevented from infecting you by your mucous membranes there. And um, except in the case of injury, uh, don't get into your bloodstream. Now, one of the reasons that uh, gut wounds are so incredibly deadly uh, is that even these bacteria, if they get into some place where they do not belong, can be very serious, uh, specifically if they get into your blood. They're not trying to get into your blood exactly, and the mucous membranes largely prevent them from it. But if you get stabbed in the gut, some of those bacteria are going to get into the blood. It's just inevitable when you have an open wound. And since most of these bacteria are gram-negative, that can cause a bad case of gram-negative septicemia, which is a common uh, complication from gut injuries. And until the advent of uh, modern antibiotics basically meant that any gut wound was going to be fatal, um, just usually not very quickly. You'd die like four or five days later of the fever rather than from the blood loss itself. Uh, these days, we have a much higher success ratio for treating them, but even still, uh, gut wounds are one of the more tricky things to deal with because of the likelihood of, of uh, gram-negative infection. 
So starting from the top, um, diseases of the teeth. The teeth are an excessive organ, uh, accessory organ of the digestive system. We don't usually think of tooth pathologies as being, well, pathologies at all. Uh, but, um, but they are like the teeth are organs, they're living tissue. Um, the, uh, the three most common, uh, diseases of the teeth are dental caries, better known as cavities, gingivitis, which is inflammation of the um, of the gums and, uh, other periodontal diseases, kind of a catch-all category. Um, so, uh, dental caries, cavities. Almost everyone has have a cavity at some point in their life by the time they reach adulthood. Uh, these are infections. They are bacteria that have made a hole in your barriers, in this case, your tooth forms a barrier between the pulp, which is the inner living tissue, and the outside world. Uh, and dental caries appear as holes or pits in the teeth. Uh, periodontal disease is gum uh, infection of the gums, usually manifests as swollen, bleeding gums, tender, bright red. Right, often painful, uh, although a duller, different pain than the pain of dental caries, which if you've had a cavity, you know about. They usually start off asymptomatic and not hurting, but they don't end up that way. Um, the most common cause of dental caries is strep mutans. You're going to want to know that. There are other things that can, but dental caries are actually not caused by um, actions of the bacteria themselves, but rather by the acid that they produce. Many of you have probably heard that sugary foods are bad for your teeth. It's technically not the sugar that's bad for your teeth. Uh, strep mutans and other dental carry causing bacteria are lactic acid fermenters or other forms of acid fermenters. And um, if they, uh, when, when they, when you feed them sugar, they produce acid. And your teeth are very, very hard, right? They're actually the enamel of your teeth is the hardest substance in your body. It's harder than bone, but it has one vulnerability, and that is acid eats right through it. Um, so feeding sugar to the bacteria produces acid, and the acid eats away at the enamel of your teeth, eventually boring a hole in it. It can either happen on the top from bacteria that get caught into small creases in your teeth, um, or in between where your teeth touch together. Um, you'll note that it, it largely is going to happen in um, areas where you have a place where bacteria can get sort of stuck inside there. And that's because strep mutans is, uh, ranges from being microaerophilic to being anaerobic. Uh, doesn't like oxygen. Uh, generally likes to live in areas where um, where there are, is less oxygen and where they can form plaques, which are, um, calcified biofilms. Uh, they start off as a biofilm and then they grow this hard shell on it. Uh, the, uh, another, um, common misconception is that it's, sugar that's bad for you. Remember that your saliva contains an enzyme called salivary amylase, which breaks down simple starches into sugars. So like, actually, if you take a drink of, say, sugary soda, it's in your mouth for a couple of seconds, and then you swallow it, and it doesn't leave much residue behind. 
Whereas something like, say, crackers or potato chips um, leaves a lot of residue behind. And you have like little bits of starch that get stuck in between your teeth um, or in your mouth. And that starch releases a constant supply of sugar as uh, it's being slowly digested by your salivary amylase. And so the things that are actually worst for your teeth are going to be like starchy things that get stuck in your mouth and then release sugar for a long period of time. Um, I guess sugary things like sticky candies um, that get stuck in your mouth would also be very harmful. Um, caramel or, uh, you know, any of the kind of hard candies that can get stuck in your teeth. But a sugary drink is, uh, is actually less harmful, or at least harmful for a smaller period of time. Uh, Porphyromus gingivalis. I'm just going to call that uh, P. gingivalis here. Uh, this is the common cause of gingivitis. Uh, it likes to live in between your gums and your teeth, where there's a nice anaerobic environment there. Uh, and it produces proteases that break down the gingival tissue, uh, causing your gums to recede and become inflamed. Uh, most adults have experienced dental caries. Many of us have experienced multiple dental uh, dental caries. Um, in the industrialized world, it is the most common bacterial infection, all right? Because it's an infection, even though we don't think of it like that. Uh, and you find it very, very commonly in the industrialized world where refined sugars and starches are common. Uh, diets high in sucrose and, as I said, starch increase the risk. Uh, and um, diagnosis, treatment, prevention. Uh, diagnosis is either by symptoms. If you've had a cavity pain, uh, it's largely unmistakable and will drive you to the dentist and you'll go, I have a cavity. Uh, or in the earlier stages by visual inspection. Your dentist is going to take a look in your mouth while he's cleaning your teeth, often also by a, uh, via um, x-rays, uh, and will often see them before they become advanced enough to cause pain. Treatment. Uh, generally speaking, by drilling and filling, right? You, uh, you drill out the infected area, and then you fill it with, these days, usually a polymer that's going to uh, be resistant to bacterial degradation in the future. So, uh, gingivitis is usually diagnosed either by symptoms, right? You notice your gums are hurting and bleeding, uh, or by visual inspection during a dental procedure, uh, and it is treated by scaling in um, more advanced cases where they actually, like, they peel back your gums and then scrape away the plaque that's underneath them to get rid of the bacteria, and also uh, antibacterial rinses. Symptoms can be treated by... Uh, use of various, like, anti-inflammatory or, or periodontal toothpastes. Uh, prevention for both uh, dental caries and gingivitis is good oral health care, all right? So brush your teeth, floss your teeth, use mouthwash.